Good evening, and welcome to the <laughs> April, but on Thursday instead of Wednesday, and back and forth again, uh, Orange Board of Selectmen meeting. It's Thursday, April 11th, for those of the, you that keep track. Um, yeah, we've had a lot of goings on, and we have a couple things that we needed to have good input at the table tonight. Um, so I think with that said, fire for this large crowd we have here. Uh, the emergency exits in the event of an emergency go up the stairway that leads up to the rear parking lot. Um, if for some reason that is not passable, you would then go down the hallway out the back, which would lead you to out to the firehouse, or you could go up the stairs behind the wall with the clock on it through the double doors, and that will put you out in front of the uh, town hall. Be sure that you don't get stuck but behind Mr. Cifarelli. He will not move, be the fastest mover up the stairs. <laughs> well, oh, the elevator is down. It broke uh, uh, when we were having those four days of the special voting. A motor, a motor went, and they're waiting for the motor. So that's why um, the elevator is not working. That's what I was told earlier today. And we're sure no one's in it, right? <laughs> Well, they were, there was banging in the beginning, but it stopped. Because I haven't seen Vinny, so I wonder how to... <laughs> Picture him. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That would be a funny cartoon. <laughs> Okay, I'll start on my left right here tonight. Good evening, John Carangelo. Good evening, Mitch Goldblatt. Good evening, P.J. Shanley. Good evening, Judy Williams. And Danny, Secretary to the Board. Very good. Okay, public participation. Public participation is for any item that is not an agenda item. We allow two minutes per speaker. Is there anybody for public participation? Seeing none at the table. Mitchell? Don't worry, I know you got something. Yeah, you know so. I got it. It's, it's, it's April. <laughs> it's this, every month. This, this Saturday is the uh, Household Hazardous Waste Collection. Um, Clean Harbors will be behind High Plains Community Center, down by the lower pavilion. People will enter Tribute Way. That's the driveway that goes down around the back of High Plains. You should pre-register first, please. Um, any household hazardous waste, it'll be, you do not have to get out of your car. It'll be collected from your trunk. Um, and you're going to proceed after that, take a sharp left, and go straight up th back towards the pavilion and out to Orange Center Road. Should be seamless, 9 a.m. until noon, household hazardous waste. The 27th, Saturday the 27th, also from 9 to noon, will be the uh, shredding day and other items. Uh, we'll have paper shredding, documents, medical documents, tax documents, all those things. For shredding, no charge. It's sponsored by the Rotary Club, although a donation is requested of the Rotary Club uh, for their scholarship fund from those that come. We will have electronics recycling. There is a charge for that. It'll be about $5 for a phone, $10 for a tablet, and, and $20 for a PC. Um, that will also be collected in the front of High Plains near the shredding. Uh, right outside of High Plains, uh, closer to the building, will be the mattresses. Uh, you can have your mattress picked up for $15 a mattress or box spring by calling 203-795-3906 to get that arranged by the Lions Club. Otherwise, you can bring your mattress or box spring there for free recycling. And while you're there, uh, right outside of High Plains, right under the uh, portico there. There'll be the CERT team, I believe, with the uh, BODAC committee and the Orange Police collecting uh, prescriptions um, and other used or unused, I should say unused, uh, prescriptions and medicines, medications um, for proper disposal. The Orange Community Women and the um, uh, Buy Nothing Orange will be under the pavilion collecting all kinds of uh, clothing and toys and games and also exchanging at the um, uh, Buy Nothing Orange area. So you got a lot going on. That's on the 27th. This, this Saturday, the this thir 13th, is just hazardous waste. And then the 27th is everything but hazardous waste. 
I meant Thank quick you. question. Yes. Uh, Sue um, von Robinstein, aren't they going to be collecting Col for the kids? Collect the, uh, correct. The um, uh, group, food, uh, you, food, you to bring the food to kids in Orange Food Bank, they'll be taking a collection under the, um, the pavilion for that as well, um, collecting that. And Mitch, just a quick, I just got a text asking sure. what, who do we register for the hazardous waste? So you register with the Regional Water Authority. You can go on our website, the town's website. There's a, um, a link a link there. There's a QR code. If you see the, the signs around town, uh, there's a QR code on the signs you can put up. If you fail to do that, when you get to the event, while you're in line, you can put the QR code in your phone and do it right on your phone. The registration, basically, it's very simple. It's just going to ask you, your name and some basic information, what town you're from, and approximately, it doesn't have to be exact, approximately what you're bringing in, how much liquid, how much solids, that kind of thing, so they have an idea of what's coming in. Um, and they keep track of that. And it's not only for, it's being advertised pretty much exclusively to Orange residents. It's not only for Orange residents. Anyone who's a member of the RWA can come to this satellite collection, but the particular town that you're from will be charged, because we do get charged, um, it's in our budget, uh, for the household hazardous waste. Okay, thank you. Okay. I just want to make one addendum to what Mitch said. As far as the <clears throat> hazardous waste, how hazardous is it? I don't know some of it. But it's said as household hazardous waste, but a lot of people out in their garage or in a cabinet or in a shed have also yard-type chemicals, which sometimes people don't consider those as a household thing, whether you have a partial thing of a, uh, a, dust, a dust for your roses or Roundup for weeds or something. If it's any of those outdoor chemicals or fertilizers that you don't know what to do with also, those are also included in this. You can bring those as well. That, so that, That's correct. I think the, the term household is that it's not for businesses. Yes. Yeah. We don't want yeah. businesses coming with 55-gallon drums of things. That's, that's basically <laughs> what it's about. Uh, but, yeah, it may be, it may be better term residential yeah. uh, hazardous waste. Yeah, but they, the term they, they provide us is household hazardous waste. But a lot of people have gardening-type things that pool, they no longer use. Pool supplies, gardening, yeah. paints, solvents, anything like that is yeah. all, all accepted. The one thing that's not accepted that people are concerned about is the small one-pound propane tanks that go on the small yeah, growth. No. I don't know why, but they're not accepted at the satellite uh, collection. It is accepted down at the Water Authority during the regular time period. I don't periods. think we take those at the transfer station. No, we either. don't. No. So you have to bring those to the, the Water Authority. To them directly. Yeah, directly, yeah. I think that's a transportation issue, I think, with those. Um, you know, because a 20-pound a, a cylinder that you have on your grill if for some reason you have a fire and that tank levies, it can have impact over a thousand feet, a thousand to twelve hundred feet beyond your back deck. So I think that's probably why they don't want somebody showing up with a. I always remember one of one friend of ours up on Orange Center Road in one of the rear houses. He was burning all the paint off his house. He had a box full of those those little green ones because they're up on the ladder burning the paint off and all and then he didn't know how do you get rid of them it was it was a challenge so anyhow anybody else for public no or announcements all one the same uh, bob you uh, tom you don't want to plug soccer no, I'm good. you have your sign ups you're all done i no, saw you starting i'm not ready okay okay, <laughs> okay. wow okay um so i have i have to well, I saw you on the park and rec meeting, so I figured any chance is a good chance. A um, few announcements here. We had a bad week a couple weeks ago. We lost several people who were very involved with the town. Um, Mitch made a thought that um, three of them all had connections to this board of selectmen. Uh, three nice ladies all died in a week. Um, two of them affected one family on both sides of the family. It was really quite a bizarre week, but our thoughts are with uh, Bob Archambault, who was very involved in the town. He was involved in just so many areas, but the Orange Foundation, he was always there to help us uh, if there was a need for something through that with uh, funding and stuff, and he was the chairman of the uh, 
a senior condominium project, the Silverbrook condominium project there. And he was on other boards and commissions and helped with the fair and with events. And Bob Archambault used to be everywhere. He was, he was just so involved. He was just a terrific guy. And Mickey Reed, who was an avid uh, swimming teacher, I mean, she was a great lady. She, she also volunteered at the Fireman's Carnival to help her husband right alongside him. And uh, she worked at the pool, and she was known for one of the ones who used to teach the toddlers uh, swimming lessons and stuff up there. And she went a long time into well into her years at teaching up there. Emma Cusacrio, she and uh, Joe, uh, Orange Fence, and they were so involved in things um, they had sons that uh, had some special needs, and Emma was a, a champion for that. And Joe was a police commissioner. Roy was on our board of selectmen. And that family has been here for 100 years, and they were so giving to the town. And then Dolores Nastry, um, Anthony's wife, she was here. She was involved in just so many things, and she was a teacher and a music teacher. And uh, she was always an uh, aspiring poet. She always came up with a poem for something when she was at it. And uh, all these people passed within a two-week window. And it was really a, a, a shocker to those of us who knew them. And uh, our thoughts go out to all of those families uh, on those losses. Um, but on a happy note, uh, Nan Giavine, who many of you had as a third grade teacher here, um, lives here in town still. She's turned 100 this week. She did. Yep. Nan turned 100 this week. Uh, she lives on Charles Court. Do you remember what the street house number is? 219. 219? 249 Charles Court. If there's anybody that would like to send Nan Giovine a birthday card, um, she's visually impaired at this point, but she's up and around and sharp as a tack still other than that. So, uh, yeah, I saw, saw her a, a while ago. Now, but um, yes, yeah, she turned 100 years old. We have five more that are coming up that uh, we've tracked down that for this year. So it's really a great thing. The Board of Finance budget hearing will be Thursday, April 25th at 7 p.m. in the cafeteria at the community center. The Amity budget referendum is Tuesday, May 7th. At, from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. at High Plains. And remember, all districts all vote at High Plains Community Center. The annual town meeting, which is our meeting where we receive the budget from the Board of Finance, um, is Wednesday, May 8th at 7.30 in the High Plains Community Center gym. And the Town of Orange budget referendum which is the town budget, and it includes the Amity budget at that point, is Wednesday, May 15th, from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m., also at High Plains Community Center. And again, all districts vote at High Plains. So that's what I have for tonight for that. Minutes. We have the minutes of our Wednesday, March 13th, 2024 meeting. If there's any errors or omissions, please state page and paragraph. If not, is there a motion on those? So moved. Second. Okay, motion's made and seconded. Good job, Ann. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Stay. Okay, one abstention. Playing with the koalas. <laughs> okay, down on the... Okay, item number one under new business is to consider and act on the request from the Orange Lions Club to waive the facility fee for use of the High Plains Cafeteria on Friday, April 26th for a military whist, which is a card game for those at home that don't understand. If you are interested in that, you can try the American Legion phone number on Grassy Hill Road, or you can... Uh, no, it's not the, the Legion. This is the Lions. Uh, they don't. So they have. All right. You know what? Call the town. Call the town hall. And in the first selectman's office, eight nine one four seven three seven, and she can connect you on that one. Yeah. This is uh, for the Lions. Um, it's a military whist card game, uh, card party. 
All any motions, questions? We've done that before. Okay, motions made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Staying unanimous. Item number two is to consider an act on waiver of bid process for the expansion of the server data room at the police department. I think Chief Gagney's gonna come up and speak on, I know. Johnny on the spot over here. Um, we have a vendor that we generally use for this stuff, so I think that's what he's gonna speak to, but I will leave it up to Chief. Thank you, good evening everyone. Uh, yeah, that's correct. We have a vendor that we have an existing relationship with, CSB out of Brantford. Um, this project, we need to expand the server room and this isn't something that you could just bring a, a regular general contractor in to do. Uh, obviously, if you read my memo, you see the sensitivity of the equipment that's involved. And the vendor that we use does have existing relationships with municipal government, um, including us, uh, the state, and federal government to include the FBI and the US Coast Guard. So we have a lot of confidence in this vendor. We're happy with this vendor. We don't want to trust our uh, sensitive stuff to uh, just anyone. And I believe this owner of this business is an Orange? He's an Orange, Orange Town resident. resident. That's correct. Yeah. So so this, is, this has been on the books for quite a while, and then it was off the books. Now it's back on the books. They need the expansion there. This money was approved under the um, capital uh, requests? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So questions for the chief. Chief, is, is this particular bidder on the state bid list? No. It's just one that we've used. They're, they're limited. Uh, has, has worked for the state, has done uh, sensitive telecommunications equipment work with the state, but does not have state contract. Okay. No, they are all pretty much independents on this. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve the bid as presented, the bid, the, the memorandum from the chief as presented to waive the bid. Yeah. Second. For a total, is that a not to exceed price, mm -hmm. chief? Yeah, it's not to exceed $100,000. Okay. So I'll amend that to include not to exceed $100,000. Okay. Motion's made. Is there a second on that? Yes. Okay, motion is made and seconded. Any other discussion? Just how long do you think it'll take? I'm not, I'm not sure, once they get going, I think it'll be a fairly quick process. I'm not sure what their backlog is right now, how soon they'll be able to start. They were, these, this is the same company that installed when we had that go around with uh, the fire department and police department, new communications equipment that had to get moved up the tower to another location and this same company, I believe. That's correct. Uh, does that installation work for us for the police department and fire department? Well, no, they didn't do the fire departments. They did the police departments. So we've used them steadily. And like I said, the, believe it or not, the company is owned by a man who, a young man who lives in Orange, loves Orange, and is raising his family here. It's done work in Guilford too, Mitch. Yeah. Okay. So motion's made and seconded. Any other questions for the chief? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Stay unanimous. Thank you, everyone. Have a great evening. Okay, John, that one's set. All right, the next one is item number four, or three, rather, to consider an act on the adoption of a phase-in of real uh, property value to be implemented July 1, 2024. Jim, uh, does it make any sense to wait for Vinny to come? Is he coming, I think? He's, he's working coming. on that other issue. Okay. Do you want to move it to the end? I think there's a lot of questions. At least I have some questions that he's going to have to answer, I think, based on his memo and a few other things that we were going to have, I think. It would be good to have him in the room. I don't know if anybody well, then move it. We'll just move it to the end if you want. Just move it until he gets here. That's fine. That's all right? Well, okay. yeah. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Put that over there. And don't take it. That's mine. Okay. Item number four is to consider an act on request to approve the license agreement for the rental of a seven and a half acre farmland parcel on Grassy Hill Road owned by the town of Orange. I will say only this, that that is um, the piece of field that uh, we've let sit fallow on purpose for, this is its fourth year now, opposite the American Legion. And with that, I invite all of you to have discussion and I'm gonna go sit out there because I'm not gonna be part of this discussion because I know the players. 
Well, I'll get it. I'll get. I'll get it. I'll get accused of uh, something. Who the hell knows? Who you appoint to run the meeting? Judy can run it. Okay. Oh, I can. Oh, great. <laughs> All right. Well, since I'm the one, um, first off, and very um, quickly, I would like to say I would like to not rent it this year. Reason being that it was very nice to drive by today and finally see some green grass growing in that field. It's been a long time coming. I know that Jim has put, I think we talked about 40, 40 43 loads of mulch from compost from the town. Um, he's limed it. We had that done. And I really would like to give that field another year. I would like to um, encourage the town to spend some of my uncle's trust money that he set aside in order to maintain the property. And I would like to encourage us to agree to use some of that money that we can go and add cover crop. We can get some of the stones picked up there, clean some of the, the, the border around it. But I do believe one more year is going to be the best thing for that land. And so I push it on to you guys. <laughs> well, having the opportunity to go to the podium. So, yeah. Oh, yes, Mitch. <laughs> okay, this is a, that's a surprise. I wasn't expecting that, but okay. Um, so you feel from a, just to make sure I understand, from a farming perspective, Correct. it's best to leave the land for an, at least another year the way it is just, and, and, and fixing, you're going to, you know, who's going to do this fixing up you're proposing with, with money from your, uh, the trust what we would have to do is go out and find, you know, somebody's going to come. I don't know whether we can, quote, pay for, like, the highway department to come in and do some of the work or if we're going to find some outside um, people to come in. Okay. But I would like to get that done, and I will, if this happens, I will definitely try and get that uh, obviously happening sooner okay. so that we can get a crop on it because I'd like to see a crop, uh, um, actually like a grass type of crop, I do want to take some of the soil down to the ag station, get it tested, see what they suggest. Um, but it's it, it's really been a crime for me to see that 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 soil has not rebounded, and using it continually for a corn crop, mm -hmm. it does take its toll. And so I would love to see a chance one more year, just okay. to see, and then we can you know put it onto all of the lease agreements like we okay. do for next year when so, they come up. So with that recommendation from you, uh, I had some other ideas coming into this meeting, which are going to be a little bit different now, but I will I'll put a recommendation out then that because this was advertised, obviously, right. for a rental that we, first of all, obviously explain to the three parties that, that mm -hmm. put in bid what we're doing, if this is what we do. But I would recommend that then next year, if it's appropriate, if the land is appropriate to be used, that we actually put it out to bid. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying $350, because I wasn't sure where we're going to go with this with three, mm -hmm. you know, I won't say equally necessarily, but, but different, different types of uses, and it would have created a concern, you know, and people have criticized us about, you know, determining how much the land is worth, and it's been very low value. We know that, and it wouldn't be, not that we're going to get thousands and thousands of dollars for this, I think probably the best way to do this, if we do it, if we do put it off, is the next year make a recommendation. Then that next year, we actually, you know, put out the same information, mm -hmm. but put it out for a bid, and go from there. And the last thing I was going to say is, um, knowing that we did have this used for corn many years ago, uh, I do know that if we have an opportunity, possibly, to use the property for something other than crops that require a cannon. We'd be, bet we'd be better off uh, because I do remember meeting some people on Farm Hill Road when they moved in um, who were not very happy about what was going on in their backyard and how to explain the, what we've all explained about. But, but, but if we have the choice, you know, if, it's, if, if, if it's corn or nothing, mm -hmm. we go for the corn. Mm -hmm. But if it's mm -hmm. corn or something else that doesn't require a cannon, I'd rather see us go that route. But also, I think we're better off just putting out to bid. 
That's my recommendation. So, so let me get that. Yeah. So if you're going to put it out to, to bid and say that the person who wants to plant corn is the highest bidder. Then then we have to make a, either, either we make a decision as a board, we're not going to do that, or we have to make a decision at that time and look at the bids. And maybe we say, okay, if we're going to pass the most, then maybe we do. I was, I was thinking of that mostly because I was looking at three possible you know, uh, uses you know, one of which I believe would need a, a cannon. The other two I was I don't believe would. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm wrong. And so, you know, I would be, if we were looking at the three tonight, I would have been pushing for one or ones that were not using the sound devices, basically. Right. Right. But then we can decide next year whether we want to just go out to just the highest bid or we want to go out for the highest bid that doesn't use a cannon. I guess we can decide that later. But just, to, just want to throw that out there after examining all this. Thank you. I, I agree with you as far as the um, the those bird scarers, it, they serve a purpose, and it's very important because if you got a crop, you're going to try and protect it. But now all of those neighbors have had it quiet there for four years, so I agree that would be something that I think we would have to really look at um, if we do open that up again, because I mean we used to get phone calls from the people living down the lake complaining about it millions of years ago. So, so that's something that I think we'd have to think about. Um, so I would open, be open to a, a proposal or um, if anybody wants to make a motion and table this, or can I just table it? We have to vote? We can, we can, we can, we can table it or we can make, or just or or act, on, act, on, act, act on it by making a recommendation that it not be. Right. Good. We'll see these two guys first. <laughs> and then if anybody. <laughs> well, I just have a question because I, you know, it, this is something that I'm not familiar with. But Judy, based upon what you're saying, you think that the land would be better served if you gave it another year and then tested. Um, but procedurally, m these bidders seem to uh, these people that are interested in renting the property seem to also plan on either cultivating it, putting some type of process down in which you can use it later on. So I guess mm -hmm. if you can educate me and, and the residents of the town, how does this normally work? I think I'd be better okay. off understanding it. I think the most important thing is that we were looking, um, and, and I was having a lot of conversation with um, with Jim about this, just a, the farm thing. We were looking at that lot. It's got an awful lot of rocks. So we were thinking, okay, we've got options. Maybe the person coming in who wanted to rent it that first year, they're going to be spending a lot of time getting the land just ready to do something. You know, so maybe, maybe don't charge them a rent that first year or trying right. to figure how to balance it out. And the more I kept thinking about it, this is very awkward to say, okay, fine, we're going to you know, let you rent that land, but by the way, you, it's really going to require getting it all cleaned up. You're going to have to you know, get everything like, like your lawn, get yep. your lawn prepared and whatnot. So in essence, that first year is really going to be a lost year. I think it behooves us as a town to do that, to do it ourselves, to get it ready so that next year, when we do think about if, if this is the way it goes, next year, if it goes up you know, for a rent and somebody wants it, it's a viable piece of land to start working on. I, I just kept it, reading this thing and I said, that's kind of harsh to have someone come in for a whole year and you're not going to gain and profit from it. All right. So by doing that, I, I and also the I would go to the ag station and find out exactly what is the best to do for that particular piece of land and get it back up so that you've got, you know, the, you've got little bugs and worms and everything coming back. It's, it's almost there, but not quite. I guess my only concern would be why should we as a town take on the expense when we can push it off to somebody else? Because I love that land. No, I understand. And because... <laughs> I would like to see it back to the way it could be, and okay. my uncle left the money to do that. So would, I well, think we should Well, you would know better than it. anybody. I, no, absolutely. I'm just trying to understand it. That's all. It's the love of the land. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have some to speak. Yeah, just, uh, 
Just excuse me, just as just as point of clarification, Jim Jim Zioli is still a farmer in town. Um, the the uh, six twenty one Lambert Road. Um, there is money, John, in an account. At this point, we have um, I think about two hundred and sixty thousand. We get a we get a uh, disbursement each year of interest from a trust account that. Richard Wright left, and it's specifically to be used for improvements on that property. Okay. So it's not actually taxpayer dollars. Right. That's what I wanted to know. Thank you. It's not coming out of your pocket. Yeah, you, Judy, certainly have a lot more experience and expertise in this area than I do. I have a hard enough time keeping my lawn alive. <laughs> um, and I think you brought up several good points. I think if that money is there for that mm -hmm. specific purpose, then that makes sense. And I also like Mitch's idea of the bid approach because we do get questioned mm -hmm. on the dollar amounts and right. I think that's a, a good alternative, a good solution to it. So mm -hmm. good. I like both ideas. Yeah. Good. I think we have somebody in yeah. yeah. public. Does anybody you would like to speak, speak, this is your chance. <laughs> <laughs> you have to go to the podium. But, yeah, that is yeah, Hello, uh, my name is Anthony Carr. I live on uh, Dogwood Road. Um, I have been trying to be a farmer for a number of years, and over the last year, I've been trying. I have started the farm. It is an active business. Uh, we do have a farm tax stamp, um, and I'm able to operate a farm in the town of Orange. Uh, but I have had a lot of issues trying to start a farm. So I tried to buy a farm. I was outbid by cash. I tried to lease a farm from Lou's Tree, uh, tr lease some land from Lou's Tree Farm. It was on FarmLink, and he, I was asked to, for $15,000 a year to do two and a half acres, which is impossible for my family to do. Um, I have, I'm a veteran, so I'm able to get a lot of, uh, you know, help with starting a farm uh, through the USDA, and. I've studied a lot on regenerative agriculture, invasive species, soil management, and all, everything like that. Um, what I believe with that land, that land is not ready to be farmed with crops. I don't think the topsoil is essentially gone on the top. There's a little bit in the middle that you can handle, and you can see I've kind of pointed those areas out. Um, but what I think I can do is plant natives, uh, natives, uh, grasses um, and different uh, flowering plants uh, to bring the wildlife back into the soil to let the earth kind of heal itself. I don't believe that we're going, because of the invasives in the area and because of the nature of the soil, that it's going to heal on its own. So I would like to kind of basically overseed with natives in most of the land and then work towards just a single acre out of the three that is empty um, and then kind of work through that to get into wildflowers. And I would like to be able to sell those wildflowers at the Orange uh, Farmer's Market, as well as to pick your own uh, for people. Uh, I would love to do a half acre of, of that with, um, with vegetables, and I would be very open even exploring a community garden within that, because I know Orange doesn't, but, so, but you know, is doing vegetables uh, and selling that as the farmer's market as well. I have four young daughters, and I just really want them to experience farming. Um, and it's been very difficult in this area to kind of get into it. Um, so I've kind of put together a plan that you can see is how I would, you know, phases of bringing it in, bring in some bees and do an aviary in there, do everything to kind of just bring in the butterflies, the bees, and start really healing that soil. Um, and so I, I think it's possible to bring it back, but uh, I don't believe that that land is ready for corn uh, anytime soon. So I would, uh, I would like to just try and, you know, let the land be as much as possible and focus on just in, enough and let the, you know, and, and bring flowers to orange. Um, so that's my part. Thank you. Thank you. And he would be accepted as a vendor at the farmer's market. I spoke with Anne Marie also about that. So. Okay. Anyone else? Anyone else? Hi, Dan. Hello. How are you? I, I am well. How are you? Good. 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 Good.
How are you? You look good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gentlemen. This chaos part. <laughs> um, where do we want to go with this? Well, I mean, I, I think, you know, Judy, you, you know more than anyone that's at this table, um, and even by the individual that came up and spoke publicly, that it's the land's not ripe for, for much of anything at this time. Um, and the fact that there are resources uh, from this trust that would make this land, I guess, more profitable potentially uh, in the future. I mean, I, I have no problem with um, um, waiting on leasing this land out. So, I mean, I guess having said all of that, I mean, I would probably just ask this board to table it um, until we believe that this property is ripe for, for, for rental use. I was say, I, I tend to agree with John. I appreciate um, what Mr. Carr has come forward with because it sounds like he's he had done a lot of research and uh, has some really good ideas. Um, but I think Judy, listening to what you said, you know, maybe for his even for his own purposes, if he bids again next year, um, we might be better off letting things get fixed up as you've proposed. And it's not just. But my understanding is you're you're not just saying let it go a year. We're we're basic we're basically saying we got work we as a town have work to do that we can do, based on this trust and getting the uh, things done there. So yeah. and I, I would go all the you know all the way to the fall and get a cover crop for the winter time. Yeah. Um, you know so, you know just even the cost of seed is is astronomical. Um, so. You know, that's something that I don't think it'd be fair to put on somebody else's shoulders if they're just getting themselves started. Right. So is, is, the, is the proper motion then to table? Is the proper motion to deny? I and mean, what are we doing? I mean, the proper motion, if you don't want to deal with it, sorry, Mike, we'll call myself out. Uh, so if you want to postpone this to a future date, it would be, not be a motion to table, it would be a motion to postpone. Okay. Right. And if you know a date certain, then put it, like if you want to, reconsider this mm -hmm. in three months, four months, four. six months, you postpone it till that agenda item, that okay. agenda month. Because yeah. I, I think postponing it to where we have the all of the other um, rentals, isn't that in the fall we, we do that, I believe? Well, it, it would depend on when this property is prepared. I mean, when, when, when do you, from your idea of what you want to do, and I understand, I think I understand it, is this something that's going to take us a full year and we we'll back here next April or something we could do this fall or something that needs to wait until... You would have the, the lease available for the, for the winter, same with the others. So the winter, and then people would plan. Okay. You know, at that point... At that point, we would take care of up to the winter crop, getting that, that, that winter crop on. And at that point, people would then come forward with all the other rentals. Okay. And we can include it in that, and then we're all on the same time frame. Okay. And just a point of order, uh, since we were already violating Robert's rules, uh, if we can have a motion to withdraw, withdraw your motion to table, yeah. and the second, because motion to table is not a debate. Oh, I know. Was it, was it seconded? I know it, was it was seconded. Was. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I knew so, we would debate it. So can we have a motion to withdraw the first yes. motion? Well, <laughs> because it was my motion to table, I'll, I'll withdraw my motion to table it, and I'll ask this board to consider a motion for postponing uh, the particular line item here um, at a later date. And do we have to give a date, or can you don't, we just? You don't have to give a date. Okay. It can come up administratively. Okay. okay. Can, can can we say though, part of your motion, John, that at whenever it comes back up, that we actually put out to bid? Yeah, I I don't care. Uh, I don't. I don't, I don't know. Do you want? Is that something you want to include now, or is that something we want to discuss so that when we do all of the. Well, Land I mean, we, we, we could do that. My, my con I don't want to say my concern, but what brought, brings that up is the fact that unlike the other other ones we've had, we've had had some controversy on other ones, let's not kid ourselves, but this is the first time we've had, I think, you know, people actually say, oh, we, we put a, we, we, the town, put a notice out and said, you know, proposals to be presented and here's the price. Mm -hmm. I think we'd rather just say, give us your proposal and include the price that you're willing to pay. And then, then we know, 
look, the, the, the answer may be 250, it may be 400, it may be 4,000, but then we know more of what the value is as opposed to us putting, uh, us putting a, a number on it. So you're, you're asking the person who was renting to put the value? Yeah, for the person renting to put, so a he want to put together a proposal with a bid, yeah. You know, they would actually bid. Okay. With proposal with an amount that they're willing to spend. And so we would do that with all the different rentals. That's what I'm asking. I'd like to, but right now we only have one on the table that we're discussing. So. But in the fall, is that that's what I'm saying administratively, would we be discussing that? Put it that? back on the agenda to discuss that later date. Thank you. Okay. okay, that's a good idea. Fair enough. So, so my yeah. motion to postpone is, is on the table if anybody would like to section it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you very much, John. I appreciate it. Gosh, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know. Okay, Vincent, they uh, postponed the um, phase in one because Mitchell has a multitude of <laughs> questions for right. you. So. Postponed it to the later part of this meeting? <laughs> so you're here. Yeah. Okay, so. Until you actually walk through here. the door, but I wanted to give you the benefit you're here. of the doubt to sit down. Uh, I appreciate that and, and wipe up the sweat and the rain. <laughs> but that's what a suit is for. All right. Uh, Hold on. Wherever you want to go, Mr. The First Lady. Mm -hmm. Thanks. You all gave me more work. I may just sub that one out to somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> Be kind. Um, Be kind. Oh, well. All right, this number five is going to be long. That's, that's so. a compliment. <laughs> yeah, I know what he wants to do, but I'm reading what there is to see if we get rid of the other easier stuff first. All right, I'm going to go to item number six next, if that's okay. Can we have a motion to go to six and seven? Let's get rid of those. They're both rel relatively easy. <laughs> now, that, now you know it's going to be long. Second. Mm -hmm. to, no, item number six, to consider an act on license agreement uh, between the town of Orange and Orange Community Nursery School. Um, their lease is almost up, up in June, I guess. Mm -hmm. And the uh, new playground was wood chipped in and all over there this week. That finally, it finally got done. It was dried out, the place dried out enough. It actually dried out beautifully when it finally happened. Um, and so the only change to it that I had is the uh, dollar amounts, the yearly rent. And it's approximately 8% per year, plus or minus that number, um, for each of the three years of the lease. That's the only change to it. It was sent to uh, the director and treasurer of the um, nursery school, and I don't know if they reached out to you or not, um, but that's all I got. Uh, I make a motion to approve. Okay, motion is made. I'll second. For discussion. Okay. okay. Um, Second is made for discussion purposes. The the playground area. Mm -hmm. um, I know that that the town did replace quite a piece of the equipment and obviously did um, some of the maintenance. But I'm. It just goes back and forth, and I'm just curious because the summer camp and also just the regular wear and tear of anybody being able to, you know, pop in there and use it. Um, I'm just wondering if that's something that the town could either take complete control over or somehow split it. I don't know. It, it, it's, it's, I believe it's in here. It's actually on us to uh, maintain that. Oh, least, okay, so it is. Part. Yeah. So, but it, is that also in the equipment? You're including the equipment yeah, in there? It's, yeah, it has been. Okay. All right. Yeah. That answers that question. I wasn't sure what the equipment. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And oh, I guess that that is yeah. Okay. I'm trying to think what the other lease was. That's right. All right. Yeah. That's okay. so. That is on us already. Right, Others. Otherwise, Mitchell. Yeah. Um, so the current lease is what twelve hundred a month or uh, uh, twelve. This right now is twelve fifty. Twelve fifty. Yeah. Thirteen. Okay. Um, yeah, I just and you may, you really answered my major question was because I knew the playground equipment was put in, but it, 
from what I can understand, it wasn't being used, but now it can be used. We've, we've, well, we've it can be the used by the it can be used by the general public. Danielle has to get it approved by the state board that approves it for daycares. Um, okay. But it's open for the general public. It's it's all set. Okay. All right. You haven't heard back from her at all about whether she'll accept this lease at all. She acknowledged that she received okay. it. Okay. And also, that's all I can. So we didn't hear back. So okay. that's it. Very good. You know, it's still. I'll be quite honest with you. For the two kindergarten rooms there, um, plus the outdoor area, plus some custodial heat, light, water, maintenance. Mm -hmm. It's very, very reasonable. Still, so we're slowly working it up to a. No, I'm not. Amount, I'm not denying that. But also for this this particular year, the entire school year up until just now, or you're saying not even yet, they haven't been able to use the playground. So, you know, we've got to. Oh well. Yeah. But that's on her. Isn't that's it? A, yeah. That's a luck of the draw. It wore, it wore yeah. out, and uh, yeah. that's the way it goes. There yeah. Okay. There were there. You know, there, there were complaints to repair it. It got held up with like everything else coming from overseas. <laughs> yep. And uh, when the equipment finally got here, then Mother Nature wasn't cooperating. And, uh, you know, it's those tankers and box ship boats that bring everything across the ocean that uh, are a challenge. If you know anybody in that area that can expedite it, let me know. <laughs> I, I know one. <laughs> but anyhow, so that's what it is. And that was the only change. So it's going from 1250 to 1300 is their first jump. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Here's a vote. Yes. Yeah. I was waiting to see if anything else. Are all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Unanimous. <laughs> Item 7 to consider an act on request to approve tax refunds totaling $7,885.02. So moved. Second. Motion's made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Staying unanimous. All right, so now we're going to go back to item three, which is the revaluation uh, dilemma. This one, um, uh, and you see right on the front, I think, I presume she put yours on the front too. Uh, John had worked up um, some possibilities with our homes and uh, the Board of Finance people yep, also included. Too. Yeah. So with our homes and the Board of Finance people's homes for possible um, happenings of the impacts. And um, there is a question with um, OPM, because we, we postponed this twice. We were allowed to postpone it twice. Hartford went looking for people to join on to postpone this because it was when Hart when they were giving Hartford the bailout and they were looking for other towns so it wasn't looked at as a select favor and they needed some towns to join in to ask for the reval delay. I received a phone call from Hartford on it. We proposed it. The group agreed to it, voted on it, and yes, we postponed it. And that happened twice. Now, there were, five, I think, five other communities with us, or, we, or there are four and us. Wilton, Danbury, and Stanford. And so us. three, four, four of us. Um, now, and if you go in and you look at the OPM count, the state has created something new. For the last 350 years, there's been eight counties in the state of Connecticut. Well, now there's nine. It's not really by counties now. What they are doing is the legislature, in their infinite wisdom, has shifted to going by the COGS, the councils of government. There's nine in the state. So now they have gone from eight counties to nine COGS. So we are not in the same COG with the others that were extended with us, the Wilton, Weston, Stamford. We are in the New Haven COG, which is 15 communities from Milford to Madison to Meriden is our region. So they're trying to do this leveling act. 
So even though, to the best of our ability, revals are supposed to be done now every five years, used to be 10, they made it five. Well, we delayed, and as these other communities did, the other communities are due for revaluation in 27. They're saying Orange is due for revaluation in 26, not because of our affiliation with these other towns that we jumped on with when they were given Hartford a deal, but we're in a different cog, and they're trying to balance Orange with the towns that are in that cog. They want it so like a whole cog region is doing revaluation at the same time. I don't think that's a good thing because there aren't that many companies out there that perform these revaluation services. And out of the 169 towns in the state, and, I think 116 of them all use the same data company for their tax bills and all. And so there's going to be some other burdens of this. So they're trying to tell us we have two more years and have to do a revaluation again. And uh, I've spoken with Martin Heff. Kevin McNabola was here. He left. He's spoken with Martin Heff from OPM. Vincent Marino has yet to is, speak to Martin Heff. Ha hasn't spoken to Martin Heff, but there's going to be some legal wrangling. Vincent is convinced between the documents that are there that we should be 27 with the other communities that jumped on at the same time for that revaluation, but they're looking at it through these COG organizations. Vincent is looking at it through the legal documents that were set up by the legislature and OPM. So it may have slipped through somewhere where somebody didn't pick up Orange is in a different COG than Stanford, Wilton, Weston. So that's where it comes in. So, so you're going to have plenty of time. I'm going to try to keep it. So short. then, so the board of finance discussed this, wrangled with this, and I believe they recommended 25 percent, which would be one of the four years. Um, so that's one consideration that's coming forward. I've heard other people that think maybe we should just load it whole boat and be done with it. Uh, that's another consideration. Um, but what you're going to do is, either way, we're going to worry about this coming tax bill, ju the July 1, 24 tax bill. And in the meantime, legal beagles are going to be working on, do we have one more year or three more years or two more years? That's, that's what's going on there. So now with that, right. I'm done, and I give so, it to Vincent. Yeah, now let me just start with a slight pat on the back. When... Uh, when the legislature changed the law moving those communities with a May election to November, they, there was an oversight, and they didn't address the, term, the, the terms of the offices of the elected officials who were currently in office. And I raised that as an issue, and initially they said, you're wrong, they're wrong, you're wrong. And I said, well, come election day, unless we swear in the newly elected officials, no one's going to be lead in charge here because your office is going to expire on election day. Well, the legislature ended up changing the law yet again because ultimately I was right. So I don't think I'm wrong in this instance because what OPM is not doing, I, I'm trying to get through it for you, uh, is following the law. That's really where it starts and ends, right? The legislature, not OPM, is what sets the law on this. 12-62 is the statute that we look at when we say when are revaluations going to be scheduled. Now, what Jim was saying about these various COGS is correct, but th that triggers in 2024. So what we're, what we're looking at is the timeline for when Orange should schedule its next revaluation, because if you look at the schedule uh, published by OPM, no one in the COG, our COG, has a timeline that is similar. We're all on different dates. So OPM is not even following the law to go into effect in 2024 by getting all these communities together. So if you look at the state of the law, which 12-62 was amended by the legislature under 22, Public Act 22-74. And what that, the pertinent language in that public act 
and I stated in my memo, uh, and I, what I tried to do is give you the history of the revaluation of the town going all the way back to 2011. I actually looked going all the way back to 2005, okay? And in 2005, we deferred to 2006. Uh, but what the legislature has said, if we fast forward to para paragraph nine of my list, all right, Special, uh, Special Act 22-6 provides that any required revaluation subsequent to any deferred revalu revaluation implemented pursuant to the prior sections, and that was our choice to defer from 22 to 23, uh, shall be implemented in accordance with the provisions of Section 12-62 of the General Statutes. All right, such subsequent reval shall commence at the point in the schedule required pursuant to Section 12-62 of the Statutes that the municipality was following prior to such deferral. That's 2022, okay? Uh, so now what we, we do is say, all right, after they adopted Special Act 22-6, they amended 12-62 in Public Act 22-74. And in, when they're uh, repealing uh, substitution of the language, what they said is, okay, so we have this time period prior to when this COG concept is going to commence. And then we have subsequent to when we want it to commence. And what they say in the Public Act, Section 7, B1, capital B, any revaluation, so now remember, in Special Act 22-6, it refers us to follow the law under 12-62. Now, what OPM is saying is this was the state of the law before they changed 12-62. They're reading the old statute. That's not the law of the land today. The law of the land is 12-62 as amended by Public Act 22-74. Okay, so you got to follow the bouncing ball. And OPM has made these mistakes before, and Mark, our tax assessor and I have called them out on it, and that's why we have a memo from undersec the undersecretary that I've included in dated September 7, 2021, where he acknowledges his mistake. And by his own words, the last paragraph, or the second to last paragraph of his memo, upon, the re upon this review, the town, is, town of Orange is not required to implement their next scheduled reval until October 1, 2022. OPM will update our reval schedules accordingly. Well, pardon me, but they didn't, right? Because if you look at their public, published uh, schedule, we go here to Orange and Orange, Orange. All right, 20, where's Orange? 2026, 2026, 2030, 2035. Well, by my math, simple math that is, got five fingers, you can count them because only going five years. 2022 brings us to 2027. I don't know how they get to 2026 unless they're using 2021. But if you look at the law, and that's what we have to be bound by, right? That's what we're a land of laws. It says in the law, Special Act 22-6, that the assessment year... Uh, so it says, the municipalities of Danbury, Orange, Wilton, and Stanford, which are required to implement a revaluation of real property for the assessment year commencing October 1, 2022, may defer to 2023. So the law is establishing that we were scheduled in 2022. So now again, five years, right, before they change anything related to 12-62, which is in the public act yet to come, about a week later, uh, but uh, it's a five-year schedule. So 2022 puts us on 2027. Okay, then, you know, again, when we look at Special Act 22-6, it says, for purposes of your schedule in the future, defer to 12-62. Well, I can only defer to the law as it exists. I can't defer to a statute that no longer exists. And when you follow the law, okay, and you go to, I'm going to just go to my memo and cheat here. Uh, when you go to what Special Act, um, so, sorry, Public Act 22-74, Section 7, B1B, revaluation subsequent to any delayed reval, 22 to 23, shall recommence on the date in such reval, dates scheduled prescribed for the revaluation zone in which the town is located, which revaluation date, this is the key language, which revaluation date schedule applied to such town prior to such delay. That was 22, okay? So you go 22 plus five years, 
27. All right, so that's why what I say in my memo is I'm of the opinion that OPM's published schedule is completely wrong on so many different levels, uh, but particularly I only care about the town of Orange. Uh, you know, and I say it so wrong on so many different levels because it does not conform to the law under 22-74 as it amended the language of 12-62. That law says, commencing October 1, 2024, OPM shall establish these region, you know, these districts, and everyone in a district shall be on the same schedule. They're saying it's going to take us to 2040 to have that happen. That's not what the law says, Right. So I don't know if they have that latitude. You know, someone's going to get messed up here. There's no way that you can take everyone who's on this five-year different schedule and suddenly say this region is going to now be on this five-year schedule, this region, that part. There's going to be times where someone's going to have to reval in three years right. or if, if, if the state is going to do this. So I think the state's going to find out that this genius system that they're trying to create to save economies of scale, which are not going to work because there's not enough services to be provided, uh, they're going to have to change this law again. Uh, so I believe, number one, I, uh, I spoke to, who did I speak to now? Uh, I spoke to someone at OPM about just general, you know, deferment and whatnot. And they said what a lot of towns are doing is, uh, who are on a two-year cycle, let's say, they're doing 25 and 75. They're doing, uh, you know, or some are doing 50-50. So I said, well, yeah, but I don't agree with your assessment of, our, and this is what we're going to do. So I said, all right, let's do 20. If we do 25, after discussion with the Board of Finance, if we do 25 the first year, because we believe it's a four-year cycle, that gives us four years times 25 is 100. If we need to litigate this, so bring a, an action to court to seeking a declaratory judgment, which we would get within a year, uh, we can do that. So... Uh, Let's do 25 with the expectation that it's going to be 25, 25, 25, and 25. And if something were to happen where what I believe is my well-reasoned uh, opinion is not going to stand because some judge on the Supreme Court disagrees with me, uh, then we'll have to do 75 next year. But I, again, I think this is well-reasoned. I think it's based on the law. And I don't understand under any any, you know, I'm going to say uh, scrambling of this process, how OPM came up with the schedule for the town of Orange. And I traced it back to 2005. And uh, I didn't want to confuse you further than I might have already, but uh, that's kind of where things stand. So I think that there's a comfortable basis to stand firm with OPM based upon its prior uh, f changing of its position to our position, I think that uh, there's no question that we were scheduled on October 1, 2022, by the law, by the undersecretary's memo, right? So we have that. And then if you go five years out from 2022, which the law requires us to do, it's 2027. Okay. Are there any questions? So with that said, Mitchell, you had said you had questions earlier. Did he, you're rolling your eyes. Did it answer any of them? I think I have more questions. Um, Vinny, um, the schedule that's in front of us that's updated eight, 25, 2022. And so Martin has Martin, yeah, I know. A Martin has letter that says OPM will update our revaluation schedules accordingly. Is that the updated? That's before that date of the letter. So well th this is this is the schedule they about update. They, they didn't update. They, they didn't did. update. It's it's clear because what he says in his memo is that we're scheduled for 2022. Mm -hmm. But this is something I just downloaded off their website a couple weeks ago. Okay. And I, you're going to get something else on another I, I agenda item we have, and I ran into the same thing with this legislative research on another document. They're, they're not updated on the state of Connecticut's right. access. So, so I guess my question then, Vin, why, why then with all this going on in your letter to us that was dated going back to April 2nd and today's April 11th, you haven't reached out to OPM? No, uh, you'll understand that more when we go into executive session. I explain okay. what I've been doing, not only with the app, well, we'll get to the application that I've been working on, and the two legal matters have been consuming most of my time with my other responsibilities. Okay. So, A and I, time. it's hard to reason with someone who, you, you, I need time to speak to the undersecretary. And he was very, very challenging. 
uh, on this. I think he feels, because I did speak with him, and I do have a relationship with him, and mm -hmm. he, um, I think he feels very challenged and he's going down with the ship kind of thing. <laughs> I think that this, are, and they're doing this with the COGS versus counties in a whole <clears throat> bunch of different departments of government business. It's not just OPM doing this with the revals. I'm encountering this with other departments that I'm dealing with also. They're going by way of the COGS, not by way of the counties. So... All right, but, but let's go back to the county situation. The, this schedule from 2023 to 2037 does not take into that county situation. You're saying it doesn't that, take that, anything into account. That, that's, gonna, that's, that's forthcoming is what you're saying. Right. Well, well, no, what I'm saying is if you go to OPM's website yeah. and you go to their page that captures this issue, that is published from a link on that page. So I have no reason not to believe that that's their schedule of revals, because if you look at that document, Mitch, look at the top of the document. Yep. It says dates pre uh, revaluation year prior to Public Act 22 74, revaluation schedule effective October 1, 23, pursuant sure. to Public Act 22 74. This was created following the passage of 22 74. It's wrong. I'll just say it's wrong. Okay. Well, and so, and so you're, you're in. Understanding this would be if it was correct that instead of saying 2026 we say 2027. Well, correct? what I would say to you is this, Mitch, is that it's revaluation year prior to Public Act 2020 22-74 uh, should be 2022, right? Okay. Because that was the revalu year that we were scheduled by his memo by the law. 22-74 was approved in 2022, so. Right, so that's what our reval was prior to the adoption of this act. Revaluation schedule effective October 1, 2023, pursuant to Public Act 22-74, the, the first column should all be different, notwithstanding where you are, because this new law doesn't take effect until October 1, 2024. Right. So October 1, 2023, our date should be 20, uh, 22 plus 5. It's 27. It's October 1, 2027. Then the second year, the second column and the third column should group us pursuant to the law with the other municipalities in our COG. So whoever put this together was not thinking and considering the law. And that's really all I got to do. I don't know what was going, what imagination was going on when they created this document, but this document makes no sense to me. Well, then, then the entire document, you're right, the, because we're not grouped in the second and third columns right. with, other, with others. It, it's not my document. I can't take credit for the error. Did you have another question? I will, but go ahead. Oh. <laughs> so just, just to try to narrow this down for, for myself and probably a lot of people, uh, our choice as a board is either to <laughs> adopt what the state of Connecticut is telling us to do well, it's not the state of Connecticut. State of Connecticut is the legislature, and they're, they, they, they put out the law. This is OPM. That's okay. an agency of the state. Okay. O either follow by what OPM is telling us to do yep. or um, decide that we believe with the interpretation of your analysis, which, by the way, I've read and I agree with you wholeheartedly, um, and go that way, which could lead, could lead to potential litigation. Potentially. There's always a risk of, okay. of us. If they firmly reject the position and we firmly believe in the position, then the only way to push back on them is, well, there are two ways. Get the legislature to pass a special act right. to say, OPM, this is what you got to do, which will we'll approach that. We could approach it that way. Or go to court right. and seek a ruling from the court saying they're wrong. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. Yes. PJ, yeah. Judy. No, PJ, so again, even to further clarify, John, I think we're talking about one of two things: phasing this in or not phasing it in. Well, right. Potentially three things. Well, in, part, in how much? In the second, 
you know, if we, do, if we do phase it in, there's two possible outcomes. We do the 25, 25, 25, 25, or if the state rules against you, and I read this too, and I think you're right, and I think you, you put some really good information in here, um, and you summarize it well. Um, I've talked to a lot of people about this, and you know, members of this board, members of the Board of Finance, neighbors, and just looking at the summary that John put together, Cifarelli, um, there's, these are some big increases, and to not consider a phase in, um, I think there's plenty members of our community that can afford it, and I think there's plenty men, uh, members of our community that would be significantly affected by not phasing this in and absorbing uh, a tax increase of this magnitude in one year. We have a lot of people, seniors on fixed income, mm -hmm. that um, this would be a, a huge financial burden. So even if it's that second option where you were incorrect, um, I, I still think it's easier from a financial point of view to do a 25, 75% increase if that was the outcome than just doing 100%. And just, just to clarify the options for the table, uh, you could do nothing, which would be 100% day one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You could do 25 and 75, which is the recommend, with 25 the first year, mm -hmm. believing that it's four years with 75 being the second year if we're proven wrong. Or you could say 50-50, right? right? Because theoretically, if you just fold and say, we're gonna go and assume two, you can do 50 and 50. Those are your options, right? I just think we all need to be aware and conversant on the options so no one leaves the room saying, I didn't think about that. The recommendation is 25, right? Because that's the, the, I think the more likely outcome here is 25 over four years. I think the undersecretary is going to come and see the light. Because it's, it's, you can't argue with the law. It's, it's black and white here. Um, well, getting all that information now, I, I agree. I don't think we should sit back and just wait for it to, uh, you know, sit back this whole first year and just think we're going to have the either four years or five years or I whatnot. Not so right. I think we really should jump in, and I would recommend um, to go the 25 percent, and we got to get it started. Right. So. Well, that's what the Board of Finance is waiting to hear. Is what we decide tonight, which Did is you hear that? no, <laughs> they're over there. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so, 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 so we're uh, we, they're waiting on that, but then, like Vincent said, there's a couple other items which have taken an inordinate amount of time uh, recently, which is what has delayed this a little bit, but um, mm -hmm. we're moving those forward tonight, and then um, this will be next on is. Radar. Mitchell, quick more question? Well, now that we're kind of off the schedule thing, which I'm not sure we resolved at all. I don't know how to resolve that, Mitch. <sighs> it's not our schedule. Well, if, 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 if the schedule is corrected, it would be a five-year. No, it would be four years. What? 22 plus five is 27. We were, we were extended to 23. Right, so the first year is 23, 24, 25, 26, rebound 27. Right, but 20, 20, no, it would be 28. If 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 our reval no, if our reval got pushed out to 2023, which it did by the law, and then the law. law says you go on your reval date prior to such delay, that's 22. Oh. So 23 is only the date that we actually did it. Right. 22 is the date you do the math. Go on. back to. So so by pushing off a year, we then we then escalated the the next reval by by a year. Yeah. Okay. But you did that because of the COVID bump hoping that they, the, the market would rev, level out a little bit. Mm, didn't really happen. Look, um, you, you, can't, you, you can't, timing is everything, right? No, I get it. It is I, what it is. I, I, th I just thought by going out to 23, our next one would be 28. Well, we would have no. liked that, but the legislature didn't, didn't that do that. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, that, that being said, someone needs to explain, not just to me, but to everybody else, what it means. I don't care if you pick one of these homes or just pick a theoretical one. You know, just pick a $1,000 increase. So let's say this. Let's say if we don't do a reval, if we don't do a, a phase in, that the increase for person X is $1,000 a year. Right, I would just okay. say one thing is uh, the 
the vice chair of the Board of Finance did a very good slideshow on this presentation that explained this. So if anyone out there in TV land wants to hear it, look up, go to the internet and watch the Board of Finance because it was put out in PowerPoint uh, presentation. Okay, well, we don't have that PowerPoint in front of us, and no. we're, we were asked to make a decision, and I'm trying to understand what it means. What, do you, what, what part are you hung up with now? All right. So if, if, if you're on the front page here with all, page with all of us on it, with all of us on it, assume okay. somebody has a tax increase. If I'm looking at, I guess the the second to last column, the second to last row there, right, where you see it starts at 927 and goes across to 677. Does that make sense to anybody there? Tax increase. See what I'm talking about? Oh, I'm on the wrong page. I'm wrong page. Yeah. Where it starts at 1064 and goes across to 714. Right. right? Okay. So. The assumption there is that the mill rates are 26 and a quarter, and that's going to balance next year's budget as the Board of Finance has right now, correct? Correct. Okay. So theoretical person has a $1,000 increase. That would right? be me. Well, I'll be close to you, but yeah. yeah. All right. Theoretically, a $1,000 increase. By phasing it in, what happens to that person's increase? It's 250 a year. Okay. It's 250 a year. How do we make up the rest of the well, money? That's not, that's, what do you mean? Well, if, if, to, if, to, if to get to the budget, it's, you it's, need $1,000 from, right. from person A, yeah. and you're only going to get 250 from person A, where's the other 750 Future coming rebuilding. from to, the, the, so to, to balance the budget? Values go up, values go down, right? The right. residential values went up greater than the commercial values. Got it. You're, to the extent that you're phasing in, you're phasing in, the difference between residential and commercial over four years. Think of it that way, right? The finance director might be able to explain it more articulately than I. You know, but that's so we're it, phasing in just for the residential, not for the commercial. Well, I don't know because some commercial may well, benefit. I'm I don't like, trying to figure this out. What, no, ahead, you're, you're phasing it in for all property, okay? Not personal property, not autos. It's just the the property. Okay. Okay. Real estate. Now, now, if you phase it in at 25%, that number that I gave you there, 26.25 mil rate, is going to go up. Okay. It's going to go up to around 31 something. I I thought there was an easy way of figuring this out, but I have to go back to Mr. Brancasey. He has to give me a new grand list because there's certain exceptions or something to what I understand yep. is the phase and raw land. I think he mentioned and some of our uh, our uh, commercial okay. uh, tax credits we've given and all. All right, so. If you're fa so that doesn't quite work then because if you're saying that the current mill rate is 32.31, agreed? Right. If you lower the mill rate to 26.25, theoretical person X has that's a, a that's a hundred percent phase in. It's a hundred percent. Right. Right. Because it has a thousand dollar increase. Right. Right. If we go to two hundred and fifty dollar increase, now the mill rate's going to go no, up. No, you can't go at it two hundred and fifty dollars. Well, that's what I'm it, trying to, that's what I'm trying to go, figure out. If you go at it a twenty five percent phase in, right? Mr. Brancasey gives me another grand list number. Then I take that grand list number and figure out what the mill rate's going to be okay. to match what we need for our taxes to balance the budget. Okay, so it's not going to be 250 then. A 25 percent, no, like 25 percent no, no. phase in means that person that was going to pay a thousand dollars is not going to pay 250. It, correct. correct. Okay. Correct. That wasn't what was said a few because minutes of, ago. Because okay. of what I said about okay. the okay. the exceptions to the grand list. Mitch, you well, that's it's a simple. simple. No, you give it this way. You've got a budget you've got to make. If yeah, you, if you, if you charge me 250 you're instead of a thousand, I can't get to that budget. It. There's a grand list. Right. That's going to be set by the tax assessor. Correct. Right. Your, your value of your property, the incremental increase realized as a result of the, re, the 23 reval, yep. is going to be, that incremental increase is going to be phased in over four years. Okay, so okay? It's, 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 so, not, it's not the tax, let me just interrupt for a second, just so we understand it. It's not the taxes that the are being phased in, the assessment so that's, that's right, being phased right. in. Okay. And then, then now I have an increase gotcha. in my assessment, and so I have 100%. Still, but it's in, it's only twenty five percent of the twenty three. Okay. Now you 
say what is the percentage okay. of the value of this piece of real estate to the overall budget that will set the tax. So it's not a case of my tax being a thousand dollars going to two fifty. It's no. a case of my. So that's an over It's a case of. Is it well? It's a, it's, a, it's a case of if my value of my home went up by a hundred thousand dollars, you're only going to put in two hundred fifty thousand in the first. Twenty-five thousand. Twenty-five thousand 20, 20, 20, in the first year. Yours that's what we're doing. Right. That's what you're doing. Right. 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 And then the tax gets based on that. Right. right. Correct. Right. Okay. Right. So every it's so driven it, by assessment, right. not that tax number. The right. tax number was to tell you, approximately, this is where you would shake right. out at this mill rate and this mill rate. Right. But if you go with the phase in, right. it then shifts the assessments, which then will give you a different right. value. Mil, a different mill rate. Right. To make it happen. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, once you determine the number of years of the phase in and the percentage, then it's just an equation, right? Yeah. yeah. So Mitch, don't worry. You're only two years older than me. You'll keep it working just the same as me. <laughs> so, and, and again, this is not anything that this not town has control about, of. Not worry about me right. and worry about everybody else out there. I, just just the all, so everyone understands what's being done. Right. A lot of people won't understand it no well, matter try. how. Because if we don't understand it, they're not going to understand well, it. So if we understand it, we can explain it to people. Some of us understand <laughs> it, but it's it's on the assessment, not on okay. the tax. You can't take the tax and say you're going to okay. turn it into Well, now we've, explained, now we've got that clear. Okay. That's good. The okay. easy way to explain it is I got a raise, and I'll just give you a number, $70 million in taxes. Yeah. So whatever mill rate number gives me that $70 million is what it is. Right. But I think the easier thing for people to understand is they got they got a tax they got an assessment increase. If the assessment went up by hundred thousand, that first year only tw twenty five of it's going to be put in. Then the second year another twenty. If we do twenty five, right, it grows. Right. And, it goes, right. Okay. Right. and I, while John is standing here, I want you to just there's three parts to our budget. There's the Orange Board oh, yeah. of Education. There's the Amity Board of Education, That's and there's the Town of Orange. Tell them what. Do you remember off the top of your head? I do. What each of the three, and I know if you don't over there. I don't, I don't have the book with me. But tell them approximately what each increase is. Uh, I believe our budget is up about $3.5 million. Amity is about one point seven. Orange Board Ed is about eight fifty, yep. And the rest is the town. And I did a spreadsheet for the Board of Finance of the increase for the town. Most of it, except for about 150000 is labor increases over the contracts that we had. John, John is correct. The Amity part is about a million seven change, but 400 change is due to population shift. When one town is a little bit less in students, yep. one is a little bit more. It's not that oranges increased crazy, but somebody else may have just dropped, and it's only this much. So our actual Amity budget increase is about a million four, and then there's uh, or a million three, and then there's another four hundred or so on there for population shift. So our Amity part is a million seven change. The Orange Board of Education part is eight hundred and change increase, and the Town of Orange piece is two and a fraction. Uh, million increase. Um, part part of that is labor. Part of it is operational expenses. PJ, is it all coming back to you? You you getting twitchy over there on this? <laughs> but so that just so those here at the table and at home understand where that there's three points to our budget, and that's where the money has to go to those three sections. So as long as you you know keep wanting and all and improving things that. All cost money. So, well, coming back full circle again <laughs> for this board's decision making tonight, um, we either are going to agree to um, defer um, the reval based upon the information that's been presented to us. And, and I think there's already a motion, isn't there? Well, you know, no. what I would suggest just to save ourselves yeah. Yeah, is. Uh, a motion to phase in the 2023 reval. The first year of that phase in to be 25 percent, and the balance over the allotted remaining term. Right. So this way, you know, we can come back and report. Depending what but happens. if it's if it's only going to be two years, then the math is simple. If it's going to be it's going to be two or four years. So instead of saying 25, it's 25 the first year, and then the balance to be split over the remaining term of the phase it, 
right? This way, we're, we're saved either way. If, you know, it's going to be 75 or 25. Mm -hmm. Either way, it hurts. Right? Uh, so moved. <laughs> Second. <laughs> okay. That got mo that you got the motion answered it enough so that she knows it. So, so right, what, people, what people need to understand then is well, that it's you going are, to be very challenging, but that they're going you to are, you are, you are by legislating a tax increase for the next number of years. Uh, it's my fault, Mitch. Uh, it's I'm not, not it's I, your what fault. I'm doing is applying the law. No, 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 no. I'm talking about just the, just the phasing, not the law part. Just, no, that's just still, the, the law is, it's your choice. No, it's, it's your choice. I'm right? saying, we, by we doing this. What would you rather implement yeah, a full I'm boat? Just I'm just saying. You, no, this, no, no, I'm asking you yeah, I'm you asking you to do 100% today or 25s? And which, which are you more comfortable how, how, how many towns did Reval this year? I can't answer uh, that. How many, of those the how many of those towns did a, did a phase in? Right, a lot of them. Have they? Yeah. The, 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 the majority of them. Okay. Majority of phasing. Wilton yeah. phased in. I know Danbury yeah. is phasing in, and I believe Stanford is phasing in. So this is just as everyone's doing it. But don't do it because everyone's doing it. No, I just want to know. I, I, no, I haven't I heard do it because it. you think it's the right thing. Yeah, again, to, to be clear, um, and I agree with uh, Mr. Shanley in the, in the sense that to do this 100% full boat is going to affect too many people in this town. Yeah. So our only choice is to do what's in the best interest of our residents, and that would be to defer it so that the impact is not as excessive as it if we did nothing. Mm -hmm. So that's why my motion was right on board with our town council, actually verbatim, uh, which was seconded uh, by um, Ms. Williams. But more importantly, it's, it's for the benefit, in my opinion, mm -hmm. um, for our residents. residents. Right. Simply put. It's, so it's, if, you, if you feel otherwise, let me know. I'm happy to, to amend I, my motion. I just, I just want people to understand that means that next year, if the, if in the Board of Finance and everyone comes forward next year and says, hey, we've got a 2% increase, Everybody, people should not be assuming that their taxes are going to go up 2%. We've said that well, every year after year, no. their taxes are going to go up much more than just but, 2% because we're going to have a phase in with it. But, the, but the, their the, house is exactly. worth more when they sell. Right, right. Well, that, that's but, true. We all, we all know that. But I'm also, sorry, I hear Mr. Leahy saying that's true. Right? right? When you, you are, your assets have gone up. All you're doing is saying, look, we're going to take four years. Let's assume it's four years. Yeah. Right? You're going to split that 100% increase. John has the data right up there. Yeah. It's on your sheet. But most of the ad increase in that column of uh, 1,064 is from the revamp. It's because our assets have gone. Right. And, and so what, you, what you're doing is you're 100% right, Mitch. You're building in an increase in the next three years after this year. Okay. Just want to make right. sure everyone understands that. That's all. Well, I, th I, th I think the average resident here in town and there's three sitting in the audience besides all of us who are involved in this understand and just by a nod of your head so you don't have to come up there's three of you would you rather have it phased in over each year for three years or four years whatever it shakes out to be once he gets done with OPM or do you want? Would you rather just all of a sudden have a thousand dollars or more in year one? How would that work for the average person? Yeah, yeah, phase it in because that's exactly. The future is going to change. Yes, yeah, that's true. That's the law. Same, same. I mean, here, here's the toughest one over here. He's got four little girls coming along. This, this guy, he's the toughest of the bunch. Yeah. <laughs> It would push it way down, but they're also paying big bucks. I mean, I've seen recent, more so recently, because I am the grocery shopper in our house, and I've seen more people now when I go to whether ShopRite, Big Y, Whole Foods, even Whole Foods, the people actually reading the labels, the price labels, not what's in it necessarily, the price labels, and they are paying attention to what they are spending because I, I hear the people, oh, well that's a, what did I get? I see people turning stuff back. Oh, take this off, take that off. I mean, years ago, you never used to see that their carts were heaped right up. Yet, this past Saturday, 
The Milford and Orange Police had to deal with a problem on the post road. The traffic was backed up a mile and a half towards Milford and into Orange, going into Costco. There was no parking left in Costco. It was taking 30 minutes if once a person got in the queue to get out from the back of Costco out to the post road to leave, like they were giving stuff away. Gold, so, gold oh, yeah, the gold, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it's absolutely crazy, but the Costco, a mile and a half in each direction, our post road was in log jam. All right, so we have a motion on the floor here for a 25% phase in, the uh, rest to be determined over the period of uh, uh, the remainder of the uh, allowable time. Any other discussion on that? One last question. Oh, this one over here. Is one last one. Vin, Vin, Vinny, you want to be well Vinny, you are, you are well, let's put it this way. You're confident that we're going to be able to get an extension of more than just the two years. Because the reason I, 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 I ask the question, Mitch, reason I ask the question is if because... If you're looking for someone to take the blame, I'll take the blame. No, no. Uh, here's the here's thing. The, no, the question is the question's this, because if we do 25 this year... Yep. And and it's and we and, and we're seventy five next year. And seventy five next year. That's the risk. Or do we do fifty well, fifty? That's, that's that's the reason that, for the question. And look, as I that's why I put those options on the table. Okay. That's your decision, not mine. I can only tell you, what I believe you? my reasoning is well grounded in the law. Okay. Doesn't mean I'm right. There's no guarantee when you go to court. But if I were making oh, the decision, and the decision is not mine, it's yours. If I were making a decision. I would try to lessen the burden on my constituents in year one and take the gamble. Otherwise, you're going to pay 50-50, you know, uh, and you're, you're skipping the opportunity to go 25s across the board. Mitch, one other thing. If you remember, and I think you were either on the board or the first selectman at the time, we went through this once before when I was on the board of finance. It was the same type of thing. It was the housing market went way up. We voted a phase it in, we got to the second year, and then we had a big recession, and the state passed a law to freeze it. Yep. You never know, that could, right. not the recession part, we hope not of that, but you never know, the state could right. vote to freeze it again if mm -hmm. enough pressure is put on them. Well, you know what, too, when this started during the COVID and the housing market started going crazy and it was walking up and walking up and walking up, people are going, wow, did you see what my neighbor's house went for? That's what mine's worth. Oh, did you see what so-and-so got for their house? It was all well and good when they were watching and comparing their house to the others. But now when the chickens come home to roost, it's a bit of a problem. you got to pay the piper. And so, historically, when housing prices go up this quickly, it usually doesn't end well. Right. No. That's right. Okay. So we have the motion and the second. Um, you sure no more? <laughs> He's worried on this one. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Unanimous. I would recommend to the Board of Finance, when they do their presentation, that they spend more time on this particular item than on some of the other parts, you know, of your lobby of slides that you always do. I think this is the one that's probably going to need the most attention at your hearing. Jimmy, I, I, I was aware of that back in March when. No, I know you are. But I already made a slide, so but I agree with your point. Yeah, I think it's gonna. I think you're gonna have more questions on that than any of the other pieces. Thank you. All right, thank you on that. Uh, no, let's see. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. By the way, Mitch, to your point on that first column, that uh, first that piece of property, I forget the name of it. As an example, 25% mm -hmm. phase in for that property means 5.17%. If I did the number math right, I think I did. And were it not for a phase in, it would have been 12.84%. So that's on that, uh, is an increase on taxes on that property. So those that's are the me. numbers you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. and that's fine. You, I think you can see the difference. That's helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Item now, we're to the five. There we go. Um, discussion and pop possible action. Do you have more? Oh, no. You're all set I'm for now. You're staying for the other thing, right? Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Yankees aren't playing tonight, so he's okay. It was a good night. <laughs> uh, discussion and possible action on submission of an application of the Town of Orange for a certificate of affordable housing completion. 
this one <coughs> really surprised people. I, I knew that we had more than the state was saying. And the state had us listed at like 72 or 76 affordable units. And I said, that's not right. That's, that's way off. Well, it turns out over time, whether it was the zoning office or the assessor's office or the clerk's office or whoever it may be, it wasn't my office, thank God. Um, I got these to hand out. Um, they had not reported to the state what, um, one for you and the two of them. And this was what I printed off from the state page also, not completely up to date, but it's what they got. Um, you know, the, they hadn't received the updates of affordable. We have approximately 5,480 living units at this point in time in town. Yeah, and um, we have approximately, as I call without looking here, 425 affordable listed properties, living units in town. The state had us listed at, I think, 70-something. And for years, I used to tell people we're at 1%, one and a fraction percent. Well, it turns out we're actually at 6-plus percent. And we thought we were at 4,900 living units until Mark updated us with some of these new apartments and stuff. And so we're actually climbed. We would have been beyond the 10% number if we were still at the 4,900. Um, but this was brought to light by the developer in speaking with her about the project on Smith Farm Road, which is 46 units, 36 are affordable out of the 46. And um, so we reached that point where we are able to ask for a moratorium. So then I'm watching the zoning meeting on TV, and they're now they're starting to interview some people and all for the next 10-year town comprehensive plan. So I spoke with a couple of the zoning board members about this and said, do you think that we should consider this while you're looking into the comprehensive town plan? And so it was rece well received, and uh, so they're working on that. So if you get the moratorium, it's four years, the moratorium. We potentially have more living units than that. We potentially could get eight or 12 years, but what we're looking at is uh, the four at the moment. And so, um, but I also found this other information and some of it, again, if you look on this one, the table is not updated on page two right here. I mean, it's not, but then I found the other pages, the last two pages of what I handed, there's only one listing on the not very last page, but those are updated. So it tells towns that are currently have phase-ins and, or phase-ins, <laughs> moratoriums, and uh, those that uh, have had them and expired, and they're all over the state. And I even looked at them politically, and they're almost a 50-50 split politically. So it's not being done by politics or anything. You have to submit it to uh, the Department of Housing and they have 90 days to make a decision on it, um, if it's accepted or not. And one thing that, there's a couple things on the, um, that interested me with it. And in the paragraph on the front page for background, that last paragraph, municipalities with an active moratorium are not subject to appeals taken under a Connecticut General uh, Statute 830-J, with limited exceptions relating to proposals for small or low-income government-assisted housing developments. So if we were to do something, we're not subject to it. But if you have 
another big project coming in, and sometimes we haven't had the problem here. Well, we, we really haven't had the problem, I think, since the apartments, probably. But, you know, in some towns, these developers, they don't get what they want, and then they turn the screws to the community by saying, you know, we're going to put in 400 units, and then the town files against them, you know, and then they have to go to court, and they negotiate, and the developers know that they're going to negotiate, mm -hmm. so they purposely do it. We haven't had that uh, situation here. But um, in some of these communities have had that uh, situation. Um, but so that's why we put this forward. So then we had um, uh, Clerk O'Sullivan and um, Mark Brancasey's office and an uh, associate from Cohen, or Cohen Wolf, Marino um, <laughs> uh, Law. Um, and a couple others, they've all been working on gathering it. And when they got done gathering it, when they hit 425 affordable qualifying units, and then they're rated by these HUEs, are they? Unit? Was yeah, that it? Housing I was going to say CEUs, but H HUEs, uh, the housing equivalency. Um, and we're in 390 something, or I think, or 360 something. We only need 109. Well, we need 109, so and we're at 300. And we're, 336. we're 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 triple. What was it? We're 336.9. We're triple what we need for the housing equivalents. And, so and Jim, that's that's the the primary point of this. This application is not to prevent affordable housing from being developed in the town. That's if anyone is under that no nope. misconception, disabuse yourself of that. Uh, this protects the town from developers who use the 830G statute as a sword to break our zoning. So this is a protection against that, uh, that angle that some developers use. Yep. This does not mean that we will not have affordable housing developments in this window of time if there's something that zoning approves. And, and everybody knows I was the advocate who brought in the one on Smith Farm. Some people are happy, some people are sad, but I know we needed to have that offer of that housing, and the, that particular developer was looking at the site on the Post Road uh, where the trailer park was. And I went and met with her. I said, look, I'm not against the project. You're doing a project here, but I really don't want school buses, if I can avoid it, stopping on the Post Road. And just another point of information, every affordable housing um, application that we have to defend in court for professional costs, legal fees, expert fees, cost the town seventy-five to one hundred and fifty thousand yeah. dollars. So, so this is again, this if once approved by the department, the town will get four years. We have enough equivalent points to then immediately file for our second four years, okay. and then if the math works out and it's one hundred nine point six, we need multiply that mm -hmm. by three. If they accept a hundred percent then we could go for a third application because the law says you don't have to delay in your next application. And if you saw the stacks of paperwork upstairs, there's enough stacks of paperwork upstairs to box. probably fill at least two paper boxes, if not three. Yeah. Um, and like I started to say, so I met with that developer. They went around the corner, and so that's over there, and you have a new medical building yeah. being built where the... Um, potential housing was going to go. So it was kind of a, a balanced win, mostly, for the town. Like I said, not everybody's happy with it, but it's, it's a balanced win because you have a new good ta commercial tax generator on the post road, and you're offering some alternative housing that was needed. So that, that's my thought on that. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to speak to this? I just... You're my guru on this stuff. I thought for sure you would say something. But I would say again, thank you to Venny, Jim, and I know you are behind a lot of this, mm -hmm. and to our zoning board. Um, this, this really goes to show how well a town can pull it together, do the best for the people that need housing, and at the same time maintain the integrity of what our town is. So that's what I want to say. Thank you. And it's not guaranteed. They have 90 days to review everything, but there's... Honestly, God, there's so much paper up there 
that I'm probably going to have to hand deliver it. And Vinny says he's going to have somebody scan it in. I said, there's not enough time in the year to scan it all in. It, there's just so much. Um, but it's I, for next time, though, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But it, but they, it, they, they can reject. There's enough cushion here that we should be covered. As close to a guarantee of four years as I can give you. Yeah. Because they'd have to reject over 220 wow. housing equivalent points. Yeah. So did anybody here at this table realize that we had that much, no. the town of Orange no. offers that much. No. Yeah. That's amazing. So, we do, and, and um, but the thing that surprised me of this whole thing is that we just have to reach this 2% level as opposed to the 10% that's in the law. And we're way past it. No, I understand the, the 2% way past, but the, I've always seen, you know, it's 10%, 10, am I right? Well, exactly, right? that's what we always were led to believe. You know, and well, I Carol, said, I, Carol, I, I've had the argument with many people, we're and, never going to get to 10%. And Carol Martin is the one. I couldn't figure out how Ben Blake was doing this. He got the moratoriums twice. They, yeah. Milford has gotten them. Now, granted, they got a lot of housing. They have built a lot of housing. But, um, um, but yeah, no, it, it, so it's not truly the 10% number. Carol Martin is the one who built the Smith yeah. Farm Project, is the one who gave, brought me the information on how this works. Her people or who explained it to me, and I'm like, no, that's not what they told us, and lo and behold. So, Vinny, um, on the first page, well, the first letter that Jim's about to sign, it says the town of Orange has four, 425 hue points. This, this is all in rough draft form. Oh, okay. This is not the application. Not final. And this is, I mean, in all, in all candor, uh, Jim's letter was a first draft before I sat and did, I was up 24 hours with this damn thing. <laughs> and because you know, one of my paralegals retired, the other one isn't available. And so it, putting this list together, because it had to get done. And I wasn't I didn't go back and change Jim's letter, which is really just a sweetheart letter we'll from get Chris it. Lefman saying right. we're filing an application. Yeah, right, we'll, because because the, 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 the letter that you should focus on if you really want to focus on a letter is the letter that has to be submitted by the town's attorney, that would be me. Uh, at the at the end? That's at the end. And while it's still in rough draft, because I still am looking to verify yep. all of the housing unit equivalents that we're entitled to, I didn't realize we had so many homes. I know, it's not, it's not on, right? All right, thank you for letting me know. Uh, so uh, I didn't realize how many homes, like the Connecticut uh, Institute for the Blind owned in this town, right? right? Those could qualify. Uh, or qu those could qualify. So I'm trying to capture everything now because so, I never want to do this again. Okay? Uh, this, is a, this is an undertaking like none other. Uh, and Patrick, thank God for Patrick. Um, and I just want to give him the credit he deserves. He yep. has... He's watching us. Yeah, he has done, uh, you know, a, a great job in putting, really helping me on this. He, he knows where all, all the paperwork is yet, Ty. Right, and he's grateful for that. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, okay, with that, with that's that the letter, time. Mitch. It's okay. uh, at the end of the package. Okay, but that number is probably the closest. That's to the cl closest to real yes. that we got. Okay. Yep. So wow. you might take this back to your place of employ, for, of as a point of interest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really. Yeah. It's a good form, Mitch. Thank you. <laughs> Matt will assign you the job. <laughs> no. yeah, they're they're embracing it left and right. But, well, you know what. I know that we have to do something, I, and I argue they hate me out there be, at COG when I say this, and in Hartford, because they keep talking about building housing everywhere. Housing. Oh, we got to build more housing. we got to build more housing. The other day in the news, they were talking about Milford with this approved plan. They're going to tear down the Sears building and all over there at the Milford Mall, and they're going to phase in 750 apartments at the mall, on the backside of the mall, over a 10-year period. Do they have any idea the impacts on police, fire, paramedics, uh, school systems, town services, everything else? 750 units in one location. And, uh, but at the COG and stuff, I always keep saying to them, enough with the housing, you're not building any jobs. You go into New Haven. How many, uh, if, if, if Yale wasn't in New Haven, in the hospital especially, right. where would all those people work? I don't know how many thousands of people are working that hospital system, but it's thousands. And you can keep building housing, but you know what? They keep, they're not keep building jobs there. I mean, they, they need jobs. And we're not, 
you got to manufacture widgets. Don't ask me what the widget is, but there's got to be things that are manufactured here. So, you know, that's, that's the They don't manufacture anything. So, all right. With that said, did we have a motion? I don't know. Did we have a motion or no on this? All right. So the motion for this one would be to authorize the first selectman to submit a letter of request to the State of Connecticut Department of Housing for a, um, I don't forget, remember Ian, what the proper title of it was. Certificate of Housing Completion. Certificate of Housing Completion, Affordable Housing Completion. Okay, that would be the motion. Second. Motion is made, and did you second? second. And seconded, okay, PJ. Judy and PJ. Okay, any other discussion on it? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Unanimous. All right. This has been a marathon tonight. Okay, committees. We have two items under that before we go to executive. Pension board, I think you said you don't have some. I will next month. Thank okay. you. No report. Fred Wolf Park Ad Hoc Committee. I don't know if you have an update, the gentleman. Yes, uh, I'll start and PJ, feel free to chime in. So we have had an opportunity to speak to our engineers. Um, the data came in. Um, as you know, or you may not know if you weren't at the meeting at Park and Rec, uh, but BNL provided us with a synopsis of different variations of what the park would look like uh, which included traffic and safety measures. Um, they also provided us data of what the public liked about those particular concepts. Um, after that meeting and looking at the data with the committee, we had a phone discussion. And what we would like to do is use the data that's been provided by uh, BNL um, and use our town resources to implement temporary traffic and safety measures. Um, we believe that it's proper to do temporary measures at this point because we don't have a master plan in place. Um, BNL was nice enough to give us a look at some ideas of a master plan, but we would be spending resources where we would then have to change potentially depending on what the master plan looked like. So we would like to ask this board or ask our first selectman, uh, I don't even know if we need a vote on it, but just to sort of implement these safety measures that were recommended by BNL. Um, I know they've met with our first selectman. Um, we've also spoke to um, our highway department. Uh, the police department, they have resources that we can use temporarily, especially in light of it's springtime. There's a lot of activity down there. And we think if we can implement something now, uh, it would better protect the public. Um, and that's where we're at at this time. Um, I think BNL has done a great job to date. Um, they've been very efficient and um, provided us a wealth of, of knowledge, especially for me, because I, you know, to me, when you look at something in a small area, which we were assigned to do, traffic and safety around the, the playscape, and the, and then now to sort of look at it at a bigger picture, um, it's exciting, but right now I think the focus on is what our task was, and that's traffic and safety. And, mm -hmm. and because we have resources at our fingertips versus several hundred thousand dollars worth of permanent fixtures at some point in time, I think this would be the best thing we, we, we could do going forward. So again, Jim, I don't know if it requires any type of decision making other than, um, you know, we're moving forward um, with tra traffic and safety measures. That would be our suggestion as a board and then also being yeah. able to do a master plan. Well, PJ, chime in if you're going no, to I mean, that, then I'll No, that was a good summary, John. What we have. This way, you know, soccer is starting soon. Lacrosse has already started. Yeah, I gave him the opportunity to plug yep. it. Um, <laughs> you know, we were at lacrosse this past weekend. Uh, the 
Playscape is being utilized. Oh. Uh, it was pretty oh. packed. So this way, with what we were tasked to do, we can make sure that area is safe for everybody and then take the master plan and incorporate the whole complex and do everything that we've been working hard to try and do. I met with the BNL engineer at your request. He contacted Ian to meet with me to see what we had available and all for the measures and what I had to complete and what was then going to go into, you know, the next phase of if, if they get the uh, next phase of work. Um, but when, for those of you at home, when you, when they speak of the safety measures, we're talking about starting to put in some, uh, stop signs, some directional flow, uh, this sort of thing to help, um, control mm -hmm. things a little bit. Um, and then, uh, I spoke with, it was Dominic, I think it's Seltruda is his name. Okay. I think it's Seltruda. Um, he was the one who came down. And um, so he asked me what was still on what I had agreed to do with the monies that I have available for it. And I said, well, I'm planning on doing this. Is the main entry off Hollow Road, now that, it, believe it or not, it's raining out now, but it's drying out slowly. And that's what has delayed us a bit. And I'll be, um, you'll see some stakes and some flagging going in along, um, well, probably both sides in some areas of that Wolf Park entry road, or um, Hollow Road, empty entry road, because it's got to get widened out. The turn is going to get pushed further over, and then it'll come up that sidewalk that runs along the playground there, and all that's why that was put in so high, because once that gets paved, it won't be as high. Um, and then that's going to go up to... Uh, I call it an intersection where um, you get up to the top of like the playground and there'll be a stop sign there just for a, a reference. And then um, uh, once we get it done, there'll be a, a divider and all kind of to correct traffic. So if traffic's coming from say lacrosse, they're gonna hit a stop sign, then they would take a right and a left to leave kind of thing um, for now. Soccer, they'll come to that area and they'll go out that way instead of sometimes they go like shooting stars. One will go up the old asphalt path this way, one will go up over here, and depends where their kids are playing and all. Um, the playground, I got to be quite honest with you. I always thought it would be a good thing. We had differences of opinion at times on it, but I thought it would be a good thing. But I had no idea on some of these nice days, there have been so many people there and they're loving it. As a matter of fact, we got notified today by uh, John Weselowski is I think, I don't know what his position is, but he's on the Orange Foundation. And they are contributing the first $5,000 towards a small, um, bigger than soccer, smaller than the fairgrounds, um, pavilion area for parents to, you know, there'll be some tables and all there, there'll be a cement slab and pavilion over it. But the playground committee had talked about that in the beginning, but you gotta let the well refill a little bit before you can, you know, spend some more on that sort of thing. But, so the Orange Foundation emailed me today that they're putting the first $5,000 donation uh, towards that. I have to bring the water and electric. They come in off of, um, Hollow Road, they come up past Abdul Qadir's house, then they take a, a left and they go through the woods and the wetlands, kind of by the wood chips, and then go all the way up to soccer up there. So what under the engineers have told me, the other engineers, not BNL, we gotta go into the woods where they head up to soccer and they're gonna tee them there, which they tell me they can do. I'm not a plumber or electrician, and then they're gonna take from there and come across and go between the end of the sidewalk and there's the stone wall there. So then there'll be power and water over on that playground side. And I want to get that done before we pave that piece of road. 
so that you'll see some activity at some point, hopefully this spring, uh, getting that done. And um, once we get that, the power and electric over, then the, that driveway done, then there's going to be some corrective action down on uh, the one that comes out to Oak View. And I'll get that squared away. And then a couple things, trees, I think, shrubs we have to plant more still. Then I'm done. Then the committee will have things. One of the things I really do like that they had on one of their plans, potentials, was where you come in off of Oak View, and I had thought about it years ago, but again, funding. The dry, if they cleared some more land from where we cleared that field, that's kind of soccer's on your left and it's the field on your right, and then you go through and lacrosse is down there and back. They want to bring a driveway through from Oak View and up and around to that lacrosse parking that way, which is good. But there's a huge piece of land in there, and that's a big piece of that glacial plain, which for future use of some sorts. I don't know what the sorts may be, and I'm not putting my label on it because they'll say that I did that. But um, it's a nice piece of land there, so probably when that starts to happen, because I probably will be it, uh, we'll end up having another piece of land cleared there, and there'll be a lot of potential for more open space usage right there. And that piece of land that is cleared, that Rick Cap cleaned up on the what would be the right side if you're headed to lacrosse, that could even be made bigger at that point. You know, that could be, um, you know, different types of fields. I think, you know, uh, whether it gets used, I think the, the lacrosse is practicing on some of it now. I don't know, maybe Tom will use some of it at some, I don't know. But all I know is my job is to clear it and get it ready. And then, like I said, we've used Rick Cap in the past. Rick Cap Salatro does an outstanding job. He really is unbelievable. I have to keep poking him before he retires to get a few more of these things done. Um, but yeah, so that's, I did like that plan of theirs a lot because there's a big piece of land in there that it's nice and it's pretty flat and it's near the parking. And, you know, I think I'm probably going to have to make, I made that parking lot over there for that playground I, for like, like for 30 cars or 32 cars or something like that. And nowhere near big enough. I, I, I just, I, I stand in, amaz in amazement there. So, I mean, they're parking over on the soccer side. They're parking down the gravel road and all. But you know what? The kids are loving it. The parents are happy with it. Um, we should be getting the um, the memorial bricks in and stuff are supposed to be going in now once weather clears. They're in the fair building up at High Plains, so it's just a matter of once spring really comes, so Mark said he'll get that job done. Um, so that's all I have to follow up on it, Mitch. So with all that being said, all that. What, what, what exactly, I mean, we run into this problem time and again. Uh, do we have a map that's going to show what this layout, Jim did a great job of describing it. Do we have a map of what's being done? Well, they done did present and, it. At, and they presented it at Park and Rec. Right. If you would like and one, you say you say make it temporary. Is that, what, well, what there, you mean by temporary? Because Are we going to pave or not pave? I mean, oh, we can do both. So... Some of the temporary measures that we're talking about is stop signs, speed bumps, uh, things like this that are simple, mm -hmm. inexpensive, and the town can provide uh, very quickly. And immediately. But, but, yeah. but, but, and can be changed. changed. But, the, but, the, but the loop, if you call it a loop, around the, um, the playground and the cutting off of the soccer parking from that area, as I recall it, is that going to be done, or is that just a temporary? I mean, I, that's I think in the future. That's, yeah. that's not it, at this point. Right. Again, to, to be very clear, our task as a committee was to do traffic and safety studies. Based upon the data that came in, BNL provided us with suggestions on where to put stop signs, speed bumps, different types of um, safety measures. What they also did, mm -hmm. and it wasn't just gratuitously, of course, but what they did is they provided us with different concepts, which included some of the things that you're mentioning, putting in another right. road <coughs> that goes around the this and that. That okay? people voted on. That people voted on. 
The reason why they did that, in my opinion, was twofold. One, they wanted people to see conceptually what it would look like with additional plans in place. We're not there. We're nowhere near there yet. No. That's, that's Our job was to put in traffic and safety, which includes stop signs, speed bumps. But also, in order to do that, Mitch, we had to have an idea of what it would look like with different things. Because if we just all of a sudden said, all right, let's put in these permanent stop signs and permanent speed bumps, we're doing a disservice to the residents. But temporary measures right now, which can be moved, will allow us the opportunity as a committee to say, okay, the town would like to do concept 3A3 or whatever it is in a master plan. Now we can see it everything. Maybe pickleball, maybe tennis, maybe additional fields, maybe additional parking lot, uh, a pavilion which has water, bathrooms, storage. So we're not there yet. So I know it's hard for everybody to s sort of stop and realize what our task as a committee was, because it was hard for us. But no, I'm not talking about putting in streets right now. I'm just talking about yeah. they have an actual of temporary plan of what's, what's there. there. And it's. I don't, I don't think you're going to see that loop road go around behind the playground for two reasons. Number one, it will be right. The reason I put the playground where it is away from that stone wall and all is because once you get encroached there, then you get to the Army Corps of Engineers because it's all wetlands beyond that stone wall. So that's a challenge on that. Plus, with the parking now being in such demand there, that loop road was going to tie into that parking. I don't think, personally, that's a wise choice now that we're seeing what's going on. But b &L will do the design work, not me. So it, when that comes, one, that will be. One more way to look at it. If we went ahead and asked for funding for 3A right now, mm -hmm. which that was the one that everybody voted on and that liked, and then we do the master plan, and we come up with other ideas, and we have to, we're limited to the scope and going forward with any other ideas on, on 3A. The playground's not going to move, despite the right. fact that people say we got to move the playground. Playground's not going to move. No. Right. So I don't understand why we went through that whole presentation and people voted on 3A. And it was the overwhelming well, choice, overwhelming choice. And now we're just saying we're going to put in speed bumps and, and stop signs and not do that. No, no, no. That was for the future, for conceptual. Yeah. The conceptual is a lot more than just that part, that, that loop. We were, you're talking a lot more conceptual than just that. Right. But you brought that up. That's why we're talking about uh, it. I don't, I don't know, but that, that's to me that was more the conceptual. That was to, to resolve a city, uh, an actual, <clears throat> excuse me, an actual traffic flow problem we have now. But there isn't one. There no. is one. No, there isn't. There is one. No, so no, there isn't. <clears throat> Mitch, just to be very clear, and and the, the purpose of that meeting was to talk about the public's input towards traffic and safety. And BNL was very clear that they made these designs, these conceptual designs that they showed everyone mm -hmm. as just examples. But the town, the residents that were at that meeting said that they needed safety measures in place. That was the overwhelming direction that the public wants. And that's what our task was as a committee. So I'm not talking. I, do I want to do it all now? 100%. I'd love to put in streets. I'd love to put in There pickle goes that phase in. I, I, I hardly see that as being doing it all. All, well, all it was, was was a loop road to take the traffic around the playground, tie it into a parking lot. I mean, I don't understand. that. That's not To me, that's not the, a, a full-blown plan. A full-blown plan is going to show pickleball. It's going to show fountains or, a, or, or I stands think it was an and idea bathrooms. They just put and, out there. Well, they put it out there to a number of people, including myself, and I think I beg to differ with some of the descriptions here. The people at that meeting, I think, walked away saying, okay, we're actually going to do something about that, about that we are, road. We are, but soccer and lacrosse time is right now. That's why I want to do the temporary safety measures to make sure that this year, this season, this week, that parking lot has been improved. And then we're we're eager to get ahead to go ahead with the master plan too. Yeah. 
and then the expansion and development of That's that That's hardly a master plan. All we're talking about is, is, is improving the safety of the fo traffic flow, and you're saying putting in a few stop signs, there, and there, there we didn't have to spend that much Mitch, money or time to put in stop signs and, 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 and speed bumps. Wait, Mitch, you have disagreed with that playground I'm not right disagreeing with the playground. You're, you're looking for a driveway that isn't at this point. These guys want to get just the speed bumps, which are the poly ones, you know, that this I point, know what you're talking and about. And sign not... some control, traffic control signs and stuff in because you have two big programs, two of the biggest utilizers of the park are beginning. And within, I think, actually, I think lacrosse already did start. They and did. soccer is yeah. on the cusp of starting. So this is what they're going to do. And we're going to get some of these stop signs and things in for now just so that they have that. Then as I get that last road done over there, you know, driveway in off of, um, I can never <laughs> click with a hollow. Colorado, That'll help Oakview. a lot with that flow going out there. And then we'll get the one corrected down at Oak View. And then that road in between is, at this point, it's just gravel. Um, get it graded and rolled with millings rolled out and all, then you will have, be having traffic exit in a, in a much better manner than what you have now. Then in your next phase, should they decide to put something forward um, like they did this time, they did it in a kind of an a la carte fashion, I'll call it, and then they'll be in, if they use B&L or somebody else, um, and then they'll start to do the next part. But there is no problem at this point in time with that. That's 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 a figment. I, there is no problem there at this moment. You just said there's people parking all over the place. That's parking. You're talking about a road. Well, you I'm want to put both? A, there's got to be more parking. Okay. Come on up. You're there, so you know. We got more to go. This this is why don't I? Tom Paisano, five two three Ferry Road. Um, would really be nice for next week, and I'd be willing to pay for it. I, or Donnie Foyer maybe can make them a sign saying lacrosse this way, playground that way. That's I, part of it. I, yeah, That's and it's just that signage. I'm standing out there all day telling people, nope. that, you know, the kids. It's going to be right when you go yeah. up so, to that sidewalk. That, that's a big it's start. right where it's going to be. That's a big start because, you know, the, our problem is, is, and lacrosse is a problem, we have people from out of town. Separating them. And, and yeah. we've got to get the people going in the right direction. You actually saw a lot of people so, from that, lacrosse. That, that at least would be a big help. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you, we actually saw a lot of people from lacrosse coming in from Oakview and exiting from Oakview, too, and that definitely helped the traffic flow. So. Good way to start. Yeah, yeah exactly. Good. It's walk, crawl before you walk and walk before you run. Okay, with that said, we'll be ready to go into... Executive session. We have a um, few things here to go into executive session. The first one <laughs> is the uh, proposed 2427 labor agreement between the Town of Orange and the Town of Orange Highway Department contract. Uh, the second one is um, the uh, teaming up with the state of Connecticut for our required share of a purchase of a development rights to some farmland here in town. Um, then Vinny has two legal updates for you, one regarding the Urbano complaint and one regarding the Antar complaint. Um, there will be possible votes on the, well, there will be a vote on the Highway Department Union contract, a vote on the uh, development rights thing. There will be no votes. Those are just uprights on the, Inform on the two legals, and we will invite uh, Finance Director Cifarelli in uh, for the, he can stay for all, but it, certainly for number one. So with that. Um, so moved. Second. Yeah. Uh, I gotta... All in favor, aye. <laughs> okay, thank you. Session at 9.15. At like, I don't know, 10.02, 10.03. This is a marathon night tonight. Uh, the first item was the uh, a labor agreement between the Town of Orange and the uh, Highway Department Union. Yep. Uh, is there a motion to be made on that one? Sure. I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the negotiations between the, the agreement between the Town of Orange and the Highway Department, ASME Local 1303-021, Council 4, AFL-CAO, for an agreement from July 1, 2024 through July, it's June 30th, 2028. 
presented. As presented. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, motion is made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Pose. Abstain. Unanimous. Okay, Foyer, if you're not out of popcorn now, go to Ben. Um, item number two was a discussion of purchase of development rights to farmland. This is an interesting concept that the State of Connecticut Department of Agriculture has, and we are partnering with the uh, uh, state, federal uh, natu nat Agriculture Natural Conserva Resources Conservation Service, NRCS, and the State of Connecticut Department of Agriculture. And when they do these partnerships, the town has to uh, agree to partner with them with a 10% uh, buy-in to it. So the town has agreed to the 10% buy-in amount of $45,100 towards the development right purchase of a 22-acre parcel here in town. Uh, due to confidentiality between the state of Connecticut and the landowner at this time, it is not available to discuss the, the names uh, on that. But um, it was met with uh, good support. Is there a motion on, as I made it? So moved. And he corrected it. As presented. <laughs> Motion's made. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Stay. Unanimous. Excellent. Uh, the last two items were updates on legal uh, situations facing the town of Orange. We were updated by Attorney Marino. There is no um, vote taken on, action taken, thank you, on those items. With that said, trying to think if there's anything else to update you on, but being that it's five after ten at night, I'm not gonna. So, to motion to adjourn at 10:05. All in favor? Aye. We're adjourned.